Hey everyone, I wanted you to hear it from me first, that after more than eight incredible months, I'm ending my presidential campaign. I know this isn't the result we wanted. We wanted to win this race. But it's important to know when it's not your time and to know how you can best serve your community and country. I believe I can best serve by helping to unite us to beat Donald Trump in 2020. That was Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, of course, dropping out of the presidential race yesterday. Gillibrand's senior aide told NBC News that she decided with her family to end her bid after she was unable to secure a spot on the September debate stage. So, Caddy, that debate stage has taken shape. Yeah, as 10 candidates now qualified for the September debate, it's all set. As of now, Joe Biden, Cory Booker, Pete Buttigieg, Julianne Castro, Kamala Harris, Amy Klobuchar, Beto O'Rourke, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Andrew Young, still 10 of them, they'll all take the stage for the first time on, for the first time on the same night in Houston. Billionaire Tom Steyer, there was some question about him, remember? He fell one poll short of qualifying after spending nearly $12 million on advertising to boost his campaign. Reverend, how does it change things, Kirsten Gillibrand getting out? If she's going to endorse somebody, could that shake up the race further when she does? Well, I, I think she brings a certain constituency, even though she didn't ever get to a certain level in the mm -hmm. polls. But I think what really is going to be interesting is now with the uh, Houston debate, you're going to have everyone on the stage. We have not seen Elizabeth Warren and uh, Joe Biden on the stage. That's going to be interesting. We've not seen uh, all of the major players together. Uh, and what it, the interaction is going to be, because we saw in the first debate, it was Kamala Harris kind of uh, gain. We got going after Joe Biden. The second debate, uh, Gabbard went after uh, Kamala Harris and, and uh, kind of hurt Kamala Harris, who's never kind of recovered. So who are they going to target in this debate? And what do they stand for? I think what really is coming down, because we're no longer way, uh, way uh, early in the process, we're now almost Labor Day, what do you stand for? Why are you running? Are you running to be a player? Or are you running to represent a certain uh, train of thought and a certain way you want to drive the country? And I think they're going to have to start defining that in the next debate. Yeah, and they're going to have difficult defining it, Reverend, with 10 people on the stage in they the are. debate. I mean, you're going to get an average of, what, two, three minutes to total, some of the candidates who will be there in the <clears throat> stage. The thing that strikes me, Nick, is that the whole debate process with all the candidates in the field, and there were a lot of them, there still are a lot of them, is the Democratic National Committee made a mess of this. I mean, the, the, there wasn't a better way to pull these debates off, to have six people at a time appearing one night. I mean, it's a mess. Well, they tried to make it as Democratic small d as possible and give many people a chance to rise. Um, these uh, kind of one in 2% candidates had a bunch of chances to rise over 2% in the poll. Uh, um, in, in the polls, they failed. Um, but it did deprive it, uh, the whole party of a chance to see their main contenders truly on one stage at the same time and hash it out. And the party kind of needs that. So there are some really big debates happening here. Um, you know, for Gillibrand, I think a reason she had trouble is that her brand, the thing she was known for, um, you know, sexual assault, the military, women's issues, Me Too, I think there isn't a lot of differentiation among the candidates on those yeah. issues. They're all on the same page. It was hard for her to push through on that. On, on, on that. Um, but there are big issues about the economy uh, and race um, and how to organize the government and reform and corruption that these candidates are not all on the same page on. And, and Warren and Biden uh, and Sanders have got to be in the same place at the same time for the party to actually start to sort these things out. And, you know, and Jonathan Lemire, uh, the DNC has been criticized. Mike offered some very legitimate criticism of, of the DNC and how this has been run. Media outlets that have run these debates have been criticized. Uh, and but, but, but I go back to the candidates. You have to seize the moment when you're up there on the stage. Donald Trump did it in 2016. One of the most famous moments was in uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, back in... 1980, in the 1980 race, when Ronald Reagan 
grabbed the microphone and said, I paid for this mic, Mr. Green. His name was Breen, but it doesn't matter. It was, a, it was one of the defining moments of the campaign. Bill Clinton was always very good at, 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 in debates doing that. I just haven't seen that with Democrats uh, in, in this mm -hmm. race. Uh, some may raise their voice, some may yell, some may do, but nobody has really seized the moment yet politically. I think that's right. Senator Harris probably came the closest with that moment with Joe Biden in the in the first yeah. debate, but didn't seem to really build off of that. That the momentum seemed to dissipate pretty quickly. Uh, but what we're going to see here is it's two things. First of all, the Reverend is exactly right. We're finally going to see all of the main contenders on the same stage, and I think political observers really want to see the interaction between Senator Warren and former Vice President Biden uh, in particular. But we're also going to see now other candidates who aren't going to be on that debate stage, maybe being forced to make the same decision that Senator Gillibrand did. And Nick is right. I mean, her campaign just sort of never took off. You know, her issues, sexual assault, Me Too, and others just didn't seem to resonate, or there wasn't enough space between her and the rest of the field for her to catch any any, any sort of fire. Uh, you know, but we saw Senator Gillibrand drop out yesterday. What about, you know, whether it's Bennett or, or Bullock, will there be others who didn't make this race, like legitimate, serious candidates, serious people who didn't make the September stage, you know, who still could make October? There is a possibility that you can, even if you fail to make this stage, you can make the next one, but that's going to be hard. And, and, if, and if, if you can't make either of these two fall debates, sort of, you, you have at that point, the question is not only do you have the ability to raise enough money to stay on, but at that point, Perhaps voters just don't want to hear what you're saying. You, there isn't, you're not resonating, you're not connecting, and maybe it is time to, to, to fold up shop. And I think we're going to see a lot of campaigns here really struggle with that decision in the next few weeks. Well, and again, as Kirsten Gillibrand said, it just may not be some of these candidates' time. Maybe this was their introduction uh, to right. national politics. Maybe uh, the next presidential run will go better for them. I mean, history is filled with examples of that happening, where somebody has a failed presidential race, uh, and then four years later, America's ready for them. Maybe that's the case. Maybe others uh, that uh, are out there, uh, maybe they can decide that uh, they want to use uh, the momentum that they have built and run for United States Senate seats. Uh, Democrats certainly need that as badly as they need the White House back and speak and speaking of that still ahead Republican Senator Johnny Isaacson announces his resignation and the path for Democrats to retake the Senate seems to be getting a little bit wider but will somebody step up and take the challenge in the Democratic Party Morning Joe is back in a moment Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.